Our sixth present, presenter is Karen Rogers from the School of Linguistics. And her topic is religion, rhetoric, retribution, persuasive voices in the public sphere. You are all going to hell. So now is the time to confess your sins, repent of your wrongdoing, and realize that you are a decrepit, worthless blight on the face of God's good earth. Statements like this show how the interpretation of ancient texts, particularly sacred ones, is a persuasive path upon which many a clumsy foot has trodden. Attempts to decipher the Bible and the meaning of it have caused over 2,000 years of misunderstandings, mayhem and megalomania, most of which can be summarised as interpretational differences or not considering what might have been lost in translation. In my thesis, I analyse the persuasive structures within the biblical Hebrew text of the Old Testament book of Isaiah at micro, macro and metalinguistic levels. My unique study decodes the persuasive rhetoric of religious scripts and identifies correlations in modern settings, particularly in regard to power, gender and equality. My work is the first of its kind to formally recognise how religious rhetoric shapes experiences and creates parameters for right ways to live beyond religious communities. Jesus knew there was a place for everything and it's not necessarily everyone's place to come to Australia said Tony Abbott in 2010. This use of the term Jesus here is somewhat typical of Christian usage in the public sphere. These authoritative terms, character references, Bible verses and use of original languages are intended to establish the speaker's righteous authority. Cue Danny Nalia with, the Lord spoke to me in a dream. Cue Scott Morrison with, having been exposed to hatred and bigotry for the views I've taken. Cue Tony Abbott's description of his own lecture as Cabinet's come to Jesus moment. Religion, particularly Christianity, is still engaged rhetorically to define one's standing, values and lifestyle choices through advertising, communications, politics and social media. So social media and the pulpit are now both forums for preaching and in both forums there is a switching of language use for authority with preachers switching between English Christianese, that is the jargon, and select Hebrew, Aramaic, Greek words from the ancient biblical texts, though not always with an understanding of how to do so. So, online conservative Christians can come across like the drunk uncle you avoid at family functions, who stands too close and parades their ideologies without fact checks and education in the field. Biblical rhetoric girds a self-made confidence to charade as an authority through spouting phrases like, the Lord has called me to touch people and God hates fags. Religious rhetoric is a persuasive voice that still says, buy what I'm selling, whatever I'm selling, or there'll be consequences. Thanks for that, Karen. Um, I think there's been much more of a, a presence of, the, of this sort of language in American politics than in Australia. Do you think it's on the rise or on the decrease in Australia? I think a lot of the sort of Christian rhetoric comes through in subversive rhetorical undercurrents in Australian politics. So you see it harbouring in things like the plebiscite and, and how uh, not necessarily closet Christians but quiet Christians approach their faith and it comes out very loudly with aspects like that in politics. So thank you.